Hi, my name is Alan from Alan Real Property. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about good glass bungalows, commonly referred as GCB. This is the most prestigious form of landed housing in Singapore. They can be found only in 39 residential areas designated as GCB areas by URA. They must have a land size of more than 1,400 square meter or 15,000 square feet. Only Singaporeans are allowed to own a GCB. There are about 2,800 GCB left in Singapore. Those that own them are the who and who in Singapore. Here, I'll be sharing with you five unique things that you don't even know about GCBs. Let's head over to the details. Do you know, out of the 39 residential areas designated as GCB areas by URA, 34 of them are located in District 10 and 11. This means most of them are along Bukit Timah and Holland Road. Only GCB in King Albert Park, Kimburn Estate, and Binjai Park are located in District 21. Here, I would like to clarify that they are along Prime Bukit Timah Road. However, this is how the district boundary is being carved out. Further up along Upper Bukit Timah, we have another GCB area in District 23. This area is known as the Chestnut Avenue. Another GCB area away from the Bukit Timah area is located in Windsor Park. This is located in District 20 along the Thomson Lander Enclaves. Where are the most expensive GCB? Well, based on each prop article, the most expensive GCB ever sold was for the 32,000 square feet freehold GCB in the converted Nansim Road area that fetched 128 million or 4,000 per square feet. Transacted in March 2021, it was the most expensive GCB last year in absolute terms. As reported, the buyer was Jing Xiaochun, wife of the founder and executive chairman of Nano Firm Technology International. The seller was Wee Sui Hong, whose family controlled the Indonesia conglomerate Sina Mas Group. Based on past transactions, the seller bought this land for only 30 million way back in 2006. In 15 years, they make a cool 99 million in profit. Very impressive return. In terms of the most expensive GCB in PSF term, this goes to a GCB in the Kuning Hill area that was transacted for 4,291 per square feet back in April 2021. This 14,844 square feet was sold for 63.7 million. The buyer was Tommy Ong, founder of the Shopify review app Stem.io. So much on the most expensive GCB in Singapore. I believe those of you who are keen to enter the GCB market will confirm few sien. However, you know worry, LNW property videos always have low bang for you. Do you know? Have you noticed that some GCBs sitting on land plots below 1,400 square meter or 15,000 square feet in the designated area are also considered as GCBs? Well, that came before the authority began gazetting GCB area some 40 years ago. These properties are still counted as GCBs. This means if you don't mind staying in such smaller GCB, yet you want to tell your friends you own a GCB, this means you will have to look at those GCB with a smaller land area. Their overall quantum will also be more affordable. Based on my research, there are smaller GCB found mainly in Kimburn Estate, along Yardwood Avenue near King Albert Park MRT Station. Another location is along Wee Tiam Ham Park of Holland Road. Do you know I enjoy running in the GCB area because I can see beautiful houses. They are also very green and cool to run in. However, these rules are not suitable for beginners runners as the terrain can be pretty challenging at times. Other smaller GCB areas can also be found in Raffles Park, Rebecca Park, Swiss Club Road, Caddicott Hill Estate to Bukit Tunga. However, if you want the cheapest GCB with a smaller land area, this means they have to be away from the city centre. One such area is the Chestnut Avenue GCB enclaves. In recent years, there are not many transactions but based on past transactions, the sizes are also smaller. Here, we can conclude that their prices are relatively lower. This means for those who are interested in entering the GCB market, these are the areas you may wish to pay attention to. In my research, I have also realized that there are multiple rental transactions in the GCB market that exceed more than 100000 per month. 
seriously, I cannot imagine that there are tenants that will pay such high rental for them. Unless obviously they have lots of money to burn, then this is another story. The high rental transaction has also caught the attention of the authorities in recent money laundering cases. One good example is the Bishop Gate rental that was leased out for 150000 per month. This set a new record for the GCB rental. If we look into the neighboring rental transaction, it seems most of the rentals are going for 20000 to 50000 per month. This 150000 seems to be out of the ordinary. Anyway, there are always tenants that are willing to pay extraordinary rental for the property they want or for record PSF for penthouses that most Singaporeans will see. We can only wish them the best in the resale market. Are you curious how much GCB prices have increased over the years? Let us go to the number. Based on the above chart, if you have bought a GCB back in 2004, it will cost only 436 per square feet. 20 years later, the average price of a GCB is hovering around 2,000 per square feet. This means prices has increased by an astonishing 359%. For the typical lender property, the average price was 446 per square feet back in 2004. Today is going for 1846 PSF. This means prices has increased by 313%. For the typical private condominium, the average price was 576 per square feet back in 2004. Today is going for 1894 PSF. This means prices has increased by 229%. Whereas for the typical HDB flat, the average price was 235 per square feet back in 2004. Today is going for 588 PSF. This means prices has increased by 151%. Here, let us go deeper by putting a number on them. Assuming a GCB that measure 15,000 square feet will cost 6.9 million back in 2004. In 2024, the same GCB will cost 30 million. The capital gain will be 23 million between them. For the same inter terrace that measure say 2,000 square feet, it will cost 900,000 back in 2004. In 2024, the same inter terrace will cost 3.7 million. The capital gain will be 2.8 million dollars. For the typical condo that measure 1,200 square feet back in 2004, it will cost 700,000. Today, in 2024, it will cost a cool 2.3 million. The capital gain will be 1.6 million dollars. And lastly, for the typical five room HDB flat that measure 1,200 square feet, it will cost 280,000 back in 2004. Today, it will cost 700000 The capital gain will be 420000 If we compare them again between the various housing types, at a quick glance, a condo will have made 381% more than a HDB flat. A typical inter-terrace will make 667% more than the same HDB flat. As for the cream de la cream, it made 5,500% more than the same HDB flat, or 55 times more. To be fair, because the quantum of the GCB is higher in the first place, the capital appreciation is also greater. However, this increase is excavated by its superior performance over the years. This means their return is further compounded over time. That is why in the long term, it still makes sense to hold on to a GCB as their prices will always appreciate over time. Going forward, how will the GCB market perform ahead? I can only say with rising land costs and rising construction costs, the cost of a GCB will only increase in the years ahead. In addition, owners who rebuilt their GCB will likely lease it for sale at a higher price than what they have paid for the original house. This is an ongoing occurrence. As we can see construction happening almost everywhere, not only in GCB area, but in most landed enclaves. Based on the h article, it also mentioned that a record number of family office applications in Singapore, with close to 900 set up in 2022 to date, despite title regulation imposed by the MAS. This is further amplified by many opting for the Global Investor Program, or GRP for short, which enable the successful applicant to apply for Singapore permanent residence status. I quote, a percentage of PRs have also successfully applied to be Singapore citizens, he said. Those successful in obtaining Singapore citizenship will eventually want to own a home befitting their status and family needs, a GCB, unquote. 
This means that demand for GCB in 2024 will be supported by this new pool of ultra high net worth buyers. Those who are in the tech space, such as TikTok CEO, getting a GCB for himself. And also, those that previously set up trust to buy a GCB. Anyway, the loophole to buy a property in trust has been closed after the authority imposed an addition 35% ABSD for those who buy under trust. However, the recent clampdown on money laundering cases has also cast a spotlight on how this illicit money has gone into our banking system and also our property market. The impact on the overall property market is very minimum, but it has definitely created some outliner transactions in the luxury market. Here, I hope you have enjoyed this GCB video so far. If you have any plans to sell your GCB or lender properties, I'm more than happy to assist you. Thank you for watching.